Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Make sure you subscribe to all three channels, Evolutionary EE Arts and Hearts Home, which is our newest, which is where we're going to be talking about the Archangel Sandalfin. Now, he is a fascinating one for many reasons. Maybe you don't hear of Sandalfin and Metatron as much as the other four big archangels. In reality, what we've gotten is that there are actually hundreds of archangels. Hundreds. There's so many, and they have a huge part in our lives and the world around us. And you know, one of the things that we definitely want to get across is that they're not confined to any one tradition. This is, again, the distortion that happens on planet Earth. And these beings are not confined to planet Earth. They're, they're far larger than just beings associated with this planet. Well, they're not even confined to being, you know, human in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the, the look on Cindy's face when I was saying what I was saying, it's it's kind of like when you make a statement or somebody makes a statement, and then what would be in your mind would be 10 times past that. Yeah. Or 100 times past that, or 1,000 times past that. So, you know, again, what we have is this matrix that we are in that gives us a, a, a distortion of reality. Uh, it's, it's not clear, and often it's exactly backwards or inverse. It, it is. And, you know, to pick up on the energy of these angels, it, it really is a blessing. They have so much to offer for as far as guiding us, helping us, you know, but you have to be able to really think outside the box because they're not, they don't operate inside of our belief system. No, absolutely not. They're, they're far larger beings than that. They're far larger beings than the earth itself. And yet there are angels and archangels and the archangels we could think in terms of these being more archetypal forces going farther back closer to source uh, you could say in many ways you know these are beings that are not too far removed from source and again we we prefer to use the word source when we're talking about the source of everything as opposed to the word god because the word god has been utilized for many beings uh, all different classifications of beings in fact you know so many of the gods of our history are really just simply extraterrestrials I know, you know, there's a certain tone to the word God now, which is, that's why we like to go around that. You know, it's sometimes it's safer for people if you use the word higher power or if you use the word source, because ultimately that's what it is. It's something, something above and beyond your, your uh, physical grasp. Absolutely. The source of all. And then there's different sources because we do have a creator of this universe, but this universe is one amongst many. Now, the archangels are not even really restricted to working in this universe. They can work outside of this universe. Definitely. They, they have a control over certain forces to keep balance, and this is what they do. So, you know, if I was to give you a, a, an equation, if you think about a video game, okay, so if you want to equate the creator of this universe that we're in to somebody that creates a video game, the archangels would be like specialists that he would pull in to bring some clarity definition and, you know, perhaps just greater focus greater interest you know to go in and to really make that game zing to give it some uh specialness some depth the archangels this is again and, and we could break it down if you if you listen to the semantics arc you know an arc is is used in construction and electricity arcs angel angle angel angles you know again this is a we're, we're talking about the construction of the matrix the natural matrix that we find ourselves in these beings are part of that construction of the natural matrix matrix that we are in so you know they are truly 
you could think of them as engineers, you know, engineering specialists to a, a, to a very, very high degree in some ways. And they can move the light, you know, change the light in a different direction, just subtle different direction to keep things running smoother or better to enhance one's experience. Absolutely. So how about Sandalfon? Yeah, what is different about him? Well, one of the things that's really interesting about him is the association with Metatron. There's some references to them being described as the two largest of the archangels, the two biggest of the archangels in some traditions. They're also described as twins or brothers. And and there is some sort of, um, well, you know, actually we have channeled uh, Sandalfin and, and he does refer to all the archangels like Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, and Metatron as his brothers. And, and, th- and that's how he came across referencing them. He, he spoke of them as his brothers. You know, and it is very nice that they do channel information that way because they channel it through a human understanding and a human through human limitations because they do want us to know that they are there in so many ways, but we might not be there in the way that we expect you know we can understand but they do channel in ways that we would understand now metatron and sandalfon though are are different in that metatron does uh utilize more of a natural artificial intelligence per se and we've spoken about that in the past and sandalfon <clears throat> is much more the conservative traditionalist in some ways you know, I, I like that, you know, when it comes to the AI and Mother Nature's natural AI. And there are ways to build upon and use this this intelligence that the mother carries in a way that keeps everything in balance. Let's say if you're one that's into Qigong and you want to do that next to a waterfall, you are going to get charged with so much uh, energy that so that uh, the earth has to offer because you're doing it next to water because this is amplified because it has more to offer the body in these ways he definitely utilizes what the mother has to offer now he he is recognized as being uh, all about music but he's even more about sound in general and the creative aspects of sound this this is a huge aspect of him you're going to understand when uh, Sandolphin is one of your more uh, dominant guides when it comes to if you have a love for music, if you want to learn to play music, if you love the classical musics, uh, your your voice, you know, singing, doing mantras, things of this nature, it's probably most likely going to tie you back to Sandolphin because he does use sound. He uses sound to mold, but he doesn't work alone. No, absolutely. And what the guides came through when they were talking about how how primal is this power, you know, creation, all that we see and experience is really in some ways just a combination of sound and light and the effects of sound upon the light. Yes, he has to work with his partner, light. So when these two things come together, we have form. So they are both uh, very gifted and very talented to bring these two forces of nature together in a way where we can see form all around us but in a very balanced way it keeps things balanced that's important to remember yes i would venture to say that all uh, you know when we're looking at the greatest musical minds like you're talking about people like tchaikovsky and beethoven and uh, Bach and and all these classical composers that they would have a dominant guide that would be most definitely associated with if not Sandolphin himself because again uh, it's all about sound and music and we know the effects of sound upon water and we, we are grateful for Dr. Emoto's experiments that clearly show the power of sound uh, upon the medium of of water and again if our bodies are 70 to 85 percent of water depending on how old we are and how well hydrated 
when we're doing our mantras, we're repatterning ourselves. This is why the Sanskrit mantras are so powerful. I cannot underestimate, you know, understate that, and we shouldn't underestimate that. And our dear sister uh, Jane, who is somebody that studied Qigong, as as I've studied Qigong going back to the 80s, um, it literally, I think I actually started reading uh, about Qigong b- without official practicing in the 70s. Uh, when she added mantras to her Qigong practice, it just, it skyrocketed. And I noticed the same thing. And it's the power of sound because when I'm doing the Qigong, I'm drawing, even though just using breath and simple movements, it might not look like you're, you're doing this, but you are drawing the light into your body. You're drawing the light into you. But it's combining it with the sound that makes it so much more powerful. So doing qigong and then doing mantras, it's it's taking all of that creative power and potential and putting it into yourself. You know, and if you want to break that down even a little bit further, uh, if you're one that needs even more detail, understanding that when you do mantras and you're using your voice, you are actually activating that that vagus nerve. And that vagus nerve is the thing that comes about and it does repattern the entire body. But how you make these sounds is very, very important too. Now, sometimes people run into a situation, they're like, I can't do mantras and there there's definitely medical reasons why. So absolutely, if you cannot do them due to something medical, do them in your mind because it is ultimately it's going to create a pathway in your in your brain that is going to help you calm down and settle down. It's like telling your your you know your entire circus it's like okay guys we really need to calm down we need to settle we need to focus. So you at least want to build that pathway so that when you when it is recognized that you're working this mantra, that your energy is going to start to fall into place. So it's always best to do it out loud, but there are circumstances where you can't and that's okay. Well, and can you hum a tune? Because you could always hum them out too. And and that's gonna be pretty much as powerful. Because you're you're putting that vibration, it's all about the vibration. So you're putting that vibration out there. So even if you could just silently hum to yourself a, a mantra, that will also help uh, bring about those effects. You know, I was thinking about um, some of the tarot cards that we have, because we have quite a few decks. And so I was pulling up some cards related to this particular archangel. Here you see the search for meaning in life. Consider an alternate approach. Surround yourself with wise teachers or friends. This one we have, <clears throat> as you see, unity, traditional viewpoints or methods, spiritual organizations, seek out mentors and like-minded friends. Victory, your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. Gifts from God, we angels bring you gifts from your creator. Open your arms to receive. So he's known for his works of presenting people's prayers to God, which would be, you know, again, this is a traditional way of looking at it. You could say that he is a conduit for source. Absolutely. Because, again, so much of of what we have in this uh, dark matrix that we find ourselves in is a is a slight distortion uh, of, of the reality of things. So, yeah, absolutely. A conduit for for source. Sure. Definitely a conduit for source, for sure. And also does work with the creator of this universe, but he also works with the creators of other universes as well. That's that's where I, I think the um, understanding can be really lost, is that he can work in other areas. But there are so many worlds out there, you guys. There are so many. It is endless. And I guess the best way I can explain it is uh, if you're ever watching a a movie and say there's a drone that's getting a really good panning of Earth and, and her layout, what she looks like, know that there's thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of worlds that are built with beings like us in them but all under a slightly different version it's just amazing how much life is out there 
Yeah, absolutely. And and part of the control grid is about letting that knowledge uh, not get out. <laughs> and so, you know, there's tr every tradition, every indigenous tradition around the world knows this. Um, but those indigenous traditions have been, for the most part, unfortunately, squished into a tiny little zone. Uh, had to go underground, so to speak, uh, in order to, you know, keep this knowledge yet not be persecuted. So, known as the brother of Metatron, lived as the prophet Elijah. So, you know, there is this um, part of the Kabbalah, part of the tradition that talks about him being translated into uh, the archangel Sandalphon. But again, just like, you know, saying that the brain is what creates consciousness, it's actually backwards. It truly is backwards. And, you know, there's some other things too. Patron to musicians, songwriters, delivers answers to prayers, brings knowledge, wisdom to earth, help de de develop a closer relationship with source. Uh, this one says, when you see flashes of turquoise lights, know that Archangel Sandolphin is guiding you. Now, Cindy tends to see a lot more pure white light with, with Sandolphin. I do. And Sandolphin was kind enough to make himself into a form that I could understand and see. And, and the thing is, is his form and his energy is so huge. It's so vast. But when I was able to see his face, see his skin, he's, he's definitely not human. I mean, there's nothing human about him, but in different realms, different areas, you're going to run into that. But he did show me his skin, his face uh, is very smooth. It is very white. It's powder white. It's absolutely beautiful. Now he can absolutely throw some beautiful sparks of color in there, but his white energy is really magnificent. And he has these biggest, most beautiful doe eyes. You know, the mouth is sort of blended into the face. The mouth is not important because he doesn't use speech language. He would work through music, tel tel telepathic ways and through vibrations through emotions things of that nature this is how he works absolutely so here you see uh this one says that sandalphon is believed to have been a serum or an angelic prince he was originally elijah again the prophet of israel <clears throat> it is said that he was carried to heaven in a burning chariot by a whirlwind while still alive it was at this point that became the archangel sandalphon as Sandalphon, he holds the position of the angelic hierarchy behind Merkaba, the heavenly chariot. Again, there's there's so much distortion and just um, lack of understanding uh, the reality of how, how this really works, how the universe works, the consciousness works. And, and it's because of, you know, partly literal translations of your, your Bible and and just, you know, also just putting the seeds out there of distortion on purpose because again when you're talking about what has gone hidden the western mystery tradition yes we can glimmer some things from the western mystery tradition uh, that are going to give us some new truths as opposed to looking at things in a purely fundamentalist point of view but there's still the distortion there is still always the distortion because again the dark control grid has infiltrated every aspect of our being on this planet when you look at the pacific ocean right can you take the entirety of the pacific ocean and put it in that thimble no you could never encompass all of the consciousness of sandolphin into a single human body that's an impossibility you are basically taking a, a thimble worth of the consciousness of sand dolphin and probably not even that in relation to the size of the Pacific Ocean and in, encasing it in a human body to come in to an incarnation as somebody like Elijah. This, this is again part of that distortion. And, and it doesn't mean that sand dolphin is from the Abrahamic tradition because he's not. He's beyond any dogma, I and mean, dogma is, is far beneath any of these beings and, and far beneath us when we step out of the body. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, you know, he, 
does have a human experience but it's not that he was a human that became an archangel but he does send his energy down in human form this does bring back more human understanding in his energy absolutely so you know again this these are distortions that just show you know lack of true understanding as as you see many of these depictions now again he is not human he, he's beyond a human but then we're not really human either when we're out of these bodies you know that's the thing we are consciousness having a human experience you know just looking looking at this this picture here i mean take the face and make the face uh pure white with these huge doe eyes this is the how send dolphin shows himself to me so I, a little more white there are splashes of color but the, i didn't see this earlier but this is a really good rendition I, I thought this might resonate with you. So again, it's patterns, it's sacred geometry. When, when we see him, you know, riding off in a fiery chariot, yeah, the temptation would be there to say that, you know, he, he uh, got aboard and was beamed up Scotty, went on a UFO and took off. But again, it's a reference to the Mer Merkaba. It's the light body, which, you know, we can access the Merkaba light body through work and dedication. And we can use mantras to do that and, and meditation. This is how mantras, meditation, qigong, you know, energy work, consciously taking the life force into our body. And also with the intention that we're going to build the light body. Because when we build the light body, you know, that truly is the key to ascending out of the 3D, 4D loop and up into the higher, higher realms, the truly higher realms. When the Merkaba is, is it takes time. It, it takes time to develop it. When it is fully activated, though, that's when we have our wings. That's when we ourselves have our wings, so to speak, and can travel to other uh, places. And uh, when I was first getting a handle on it, um, it made me nauseous as can be because I would find myself all of a sudden projecting outside of the body. And this is part of what I've shared when we talk about uh, flat earth, round earth, because I found myself, you know, f flying away at amazing speeds away from the earth, looking back at the earth as it's getting some farther away. And it was through not having full control of my Merkaba yet, which has gotten uh, much better over time. And even now, uh, it, it, you know, when you're in your Merkaba, this is when you see those orbs and we had one sent to us by one of our family members michael big mike big big mike so you know again a lot of the the beings that we see in these uh lights that are twirling spinning these are people in merkabas these are people beings consciousnesses in merkabas and we can do this, you know, and it's it's something that I do on a regular basis. And and truly, I, I didn't really make the pro progress until I was using the mantras as, you know, I'd been working on Qigong for decades, decades. But then when I incorporated the mantras in, uh, the progress really, really came. And so we can go anywhere just by thinking of it. You can go and see and explore other worlds. You can look at things from a 5D perspective. And so this is what the reference to Elijah in the fiery chariot, you know, again, th these are things that are unfortunately misunderstood, but it's part of the control system because they don't want you understanding that you can develop your Merkaba and you're no longer limited. You, you can achieve just about anything once you have the light body fully activated. I think a lot of people look at space travel through the lens of uh, the technology. It's like, oh, thank goodness, we're going to get technology to take us to Mars. We're going to have technology to take us anywhere. But the real true technology, and this is what I mean about the natural AI part of things, is inside of you. It's inside of you. It's building your very own Merkaba because we don't have to get into a piece of equipment to go somewhere else. I, I think that's another one of the biggest um, biggest mysteries that they really keep from humans is that you are so 
wonderfully made that you can do these impressive things and if you look on the outside of you they teach you from a very young age to see okay everything that is tangible is on the outside of you but the true nature of everything is that it's all inside of you absolutely so i think back to this was um, a, a sighting off of kiowa island uh, in south carolina now this this is what we would call a merkaba so this is somebody that's visiting and and they're watching you know it, they may be maybe there's somebody that's embodied could be could be somebody in a body probably not but you never know it, it could be, you know, again, one among so many different consciousnesses that are watching the earth at this particular time, fascinated, saying, what are those crazy humans going to do next? I know, <laughs> and that could be problematic, but, but we are definitely gaining control. We're gaining understanding about what we really can do, and we're moving forward with that, and we need to just keep going. So again, you can contact and work with uh, the Archangels and Dolphin through music mantras, through any sort of, you, know, you could grab a drum, you could do Native American drumming and, and contact them through that way. You can do a mantra to them. And again, one thing you can do if you want to use Sanskrit is just Om Namo. Om Namo. Om Namo Sandalfin. It just, that will work. And Namo just simply means like you're bowing, you're showing respect, and, and you're addressing the person. And again, these, these beings won't really ignore us. They will do what they can for us. But again, there's also all the implications about human free will and also karmic things that we might not be able to see from this angle. Very important to remember is that there are implications that when they are looking from that vast of a um, an understanding that there's a lot of things that they can see that you don't and remember that they do care about you. They have the utmost respect as as you are human having an ex a human experience on this plane of existence and they are not going to tamper with that and that just shows you the the love and respect that they have for life yeah and again you know when you look in, into the bible you'll find some things that are are references to uh, a straight reality of, of of creation but then you know you have to wade through the distortions that the creators have uh, put in at every at every spot they possibly could so you know when you hear of the the spirit of god hovering over the waters right this this is really reference to the recreation of earth after the destruction of of tiamat because some people have picked up on the fact that there's two creation stories and because you know the original creation was tiamat the recreation was earth and then you had the Anunnaki takeover, the draconian AI Anunnakian takeover. But again, the word, the word was, you know, with God and the word was God. And again, that word is, is the power of sound. And the power of sound over the waters gives you the formation of, of the manifested uh, universe. Uh, you know, add in, of course, the light, the light and the sound give you your creation makes yes. form makes form that's right and again the archangels you could think of these guys as you know the ultra engineers of of creation indeed as always guys thanks for your support on ko-fi and patreon much love if you need to make an appointment uh it's evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com god bless namaste namaste